Like Clockwork, DSP went on one of his regular rants recently. The usual one, you know, where he's better than everyone because they have ads and advertisements and sponsors, and he begs, so he's more honorable somehow. This time, though, there was an extra spice in this one. I won't show the entire video, as it's 90% his daily I'm better for begging rants, and we've heard those all before. But the illustrious Snort Hogan did a video covering it all. I'll put a link in the description and the video title on screen. The extra spice is this particular part. Just to give you guys a perfect example of what I'm talking about here, okay? Every day, without exaggeration, every day I get another one of these offers um, for sponsorship. And these are, the, these are the same offers that every other YouTuber takes and why you see constant sponsored content, constant paid advertisements, constant sponsored streams and stuff that those people would never do. They would never do that crap normally. It was hilarious the other day I was browsing YouTube. And, you know, you're seeing videos pop up in your feed. And there's a video that pops up in the feed, and it's someone doing, like, a factual documentary about something. But the preview, the video preview, is like demons in a video game. I was like, what the hell? That, that video preview has nothing to do with the video. What is it? I clicked on it. Oh, Raid Shadow Legends ad. So the Raid Shadow Legends ad became the video preview for their video, meaning no one's going to watch that video. They're going to see the video preview as an ad. They're never going to watch that. And I'm looking at I'm like, <laughs> this is this is where what's become of YouTubers. It, it's all about this first, and then the content second. Not me, because I don't have this. <laughs> I don't have that component in my content on purpose. Here's the. If you've been to any of my streams, you may have noticed I'm a huge history nerd. I bring it up occasionally. Two of my favorite channels are Armchair Historian and The Great War. Great content from both these channels. Definitely check them out if you get the chance. Nearly every one of their videos has a promotion or a sponsor. Sometimes it's World of Tangs, sometimes it's a VPN. And yes, even the occasional ad for Raid Shadow Legends. But this is confusing to poor Philo, so let me explain it in his language. So, back in the 90s and early 2000s, they had a thing called History Channel. Now. This was before it became about aliens running pawn shops while wrestling gators. Nut. <laughs> but they would do shows about history, like, um, Cowboys and Genghis Khan. And like, every 15 minutes, they would do something called commercials. And, uh, they didn't make any logical sense, dude. They would advertise car dealerships, AARP, and Irish Spring. And, and get this, and get this, sometimes they would advertise... Cialis. Like, <laughs> that has nothing to do with history, dude. <laughs> Someone over there at the network must have messed up or something. You would think Mr. I Need That Money to Pay My Bills would understand that these channels need to pay their bills too. YouTube constantly demonetizes history videos as advertisers don't want to put their ads next to war crimes and atrocities. And history in general isn't lucrative. Never has been. No one ever looks at an iced out baller and says, hey, that's a history major. Look at the amount of work that went into this video from Armchair Historian. You have art, animation, pop-ups, transitions, green screen, lighting, research, script writing, and so forth. This is clearly a team endeavor, and what an endeavor it is. This much work would put Philo into a coma. You think a sponsorship from Rage Shadow Legends pays for this? Of course it doesn't! It's at least some money though, and as you said yourself, DSP Gaming, but you never think about, oh, just a dollar, right? Even a dollar helps. It really does. There's a presupposition that people won't work without a profit incentive. DSP takes this and warps it to absurdism in two directions. On one side, anything suggested to Philo that requires any effort and doesn't guarantee immediate profit is immediately rejected. Now, this isn't inherently bad, but he uses it to justify his vegetation. You're suggesting something that would cut into my drinking and pulling time and won't instantly add some zeros to my bank account? I will now berate you. But the other side is what's applicable in this case. To DSP, anyone doing anything at any time is only doing it for the money. To Philo, it is unfathomable that anyone would do anything for any other reason. Not out of personal interest, duty, sense of obligation, enjoyment, Something's fun to you. No, no. No siree. Phil, you insufferable dickhead. 
Did you even once consider this in that vacuous head of yours as you rubbed your fingers together? Obviously not. And this leads to the greater point of this video. This is not an uncommon phenomenon. It happens mostly from the ages of 12 to 18, middle school and high school. We see characters like Bender, Rick, Raphael, Al Bundy, or maybe real people like Mac Daddy Pimps, George Carlin, and D.O.G. Or Peter Finkman, Howard Stern, angry video game nerd, and whoever wrestler in DSP's case. And we notice a trend. These people are abrasive, sardonic, but right. Yeah, they offend people, but they tell it like it is, man. Many youth internalize the message that the truth is brutal, but warp it to mean, if I'm brutal, I'm truthful. And that's what's at play when a friend comes up and asks how they look in their new dress, to which the dickhead says, Oh my god, oh, ah, you look like a beached manatee. And what's with that makeup? Were you headbutted? Was it by a clown? The friend naturally gets upset, to which the dickhead says, Hey, I'm just being honest. Most people grew out of this in their 20s for many reasons. Finally learned empathy, calmed by the natural force of age, the realization that you actually need to be correct to successfully be such a person, or that these characters are scripted to always be correct. But DSP never matured out of this. Young Phil in his late 20s never learned this, and modern Phil still hasn't learned this. He regularly says he sees both sides of things, and that the world isn't black and white. But DSP doesn't see life in shades of gray as he claims. He sees it in shades of brown. Everything and everyone is shit. And because he hates everything, he's a force of truth. Those bastards doing those history videos, clearly they're in it to enrich themselves with Rage Shadow Legend sponsorships. Everything and anything is condemned, complained about, insulted, and derided. But if you bring this up, his response is always the same. So I should kiss its butt, say it's flawless, say everything is sunshine and roses. No, I'm gonna be honest. You'll notice these words coming from the same oozing orifice that not 20 minutes ago said life isn't black and white. But for DSP, it really is only black and white. Either you're an ignoramus living in a fantasy dream world where everything is gumdrops and rainbows, or you're a nihilistic prick who is always right. Take a guess as to which one DSP is. The last thing I want to leave you with is in regards to the idea that Phil is capable of change. Truly I admire so many people's hope for humanity and compassion in believing this. Still do feel hope for humanity, still do believe people are capable of change in general. But for Phil, think of it this way, do you really think change is possible for a person when they're cruising through their 40s and has not matured past a point he should have gotten over in his 20s?